often answer, in fact, every one of them so far has answered to me, uh, very secure. I'm not going to be convinced otherwise. And I said, well, then you have nothing to fear by going to the spiritual sessions. Uh, and what I would recommend that you do is I'm not asking you to agree with everything, but see what you can agree with that you can adopt to enhance the frontal lobe of your brain. And so they'll agree with that. I'll even tell them how I have learned from preeminent psychologists and psychiatrists who are atheistic and actually spew their atheism. I don't use the term spew, uh, but they, they talk about their atheism in a very positive way as they're giving a lecture. Does that mean I can't learn from them? No, there are some things I can learn from them. Uh, but, uh, and so they need to be open enough to be able to learn from people who actually do believe in God uh, and, and state that belief as part of it as well, but see what it is that they can, uh, they can um, agree with. And so the three principles that are part of the program is truth, and that means even accuracy in thought. By day five, we're going into an analysis of thoughts and what is a biased thought and a distorted thought and what is a true and accurate thought and we teach them uh, those 10 different ways of distorted thinking. We also talk about, in the medical literature, it's called altruism, or uh, in the Bible it's called agape, self-sacrificing love. Those who utilize self-sacrificing love as a principle of their life, do you think their mental health is better or worse? Yes. It's actually better, and studies show if you do an intervention that way, it will improve. Now, this is not intuitive because self-sacrifice normally means that you're sacrificing yourself. It does mean that you're sacrificing yourself simply for the good of someone else. You're not expecting to get any positive things in return. But yet, the, the, the literature shows it is positive. And then freedom. So those are the three foundational spiritual principles. And by freedom, that means they're not coercive to others. Uh, they can be persuasive but not coercive, and, and absolute freedom means that they have comprehensive self-control. And uh, this is something uh, that we really deal with them, and in, in this, this will determine their long-term success is the comprehensive self-control, and it turns out that's a spiritual factor. In reality, it's kind of a misnomer. Uh, because self-control, in order to have comprehensive self-control, we need to have a power from the outside uh, that is influencing our life, and that is the love of God and, uh, and taking that upon ourselves. And so we teach them how to do that. And the atheist at the end of the program, in fact, uh, the last atheist that we had come on her final visit uh, to me, she says, you know, Dr. Nedley, I believe in truth. I believe in love. I believe in freedom. I believe in all of those principles. And she says, I want to grow in all of those principles. And I notice you're a Seventh-day Adventist, so when I go home to Toronto, I'm going to go to a Seventh-day Adventist church so I can learn uh, more about these. Uh, she didn't tell me at that point that she had given up her atheism. Uh, she was pretty proud about it when she had come. I think it was a little too much to have her uh, say that, but she was certainly open to the uh, spiritual and actually even open to attending church. So in summary, don't wait for depression's complications. Get on the best pathway of health of mind. Implement thoughts that will change brain chemistry for the better. We haven't talked much about that, but I'm planning on talking about that uh, tomorrow uh, in our uh, closing session and make the choices that will positively impact your life long term. And by coming here to these, uh, to these camp meeting um, uh, series of meetings, uh, I want you to realize that you have stepped in to the largest room in the world, and that is the room for improvement. And so I would uh, encourage uh, e each of you to review your own life, see what you can do. For some of you, it might be a bedtime schedule. For some others, it might be giving up something that's an addictive substance. For some others, it might be an exercise schedule. For some others, it might be adequate sleep. Uh, for, for others, it might be a, a significant dietary change um, to uh, take advantage of what Daniel uh, took advantage of. Uh, and so uh, I would encourage you uh, to um, read the words of the Apostle Paul when he said uh, in Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a what? <laughs> Living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. Some people might call this lifestyle extremism. It's not extremism. Paul calls it what? He said it's your reasonable service. It's reasonable. And it makes sense. And it actually, why forsake your own mercy? In reality, 
by sacrificing yourself in your own desires, it seems like you're going to have a less full life but in reality, your life is going to be far more full. It will actually be far more beneficial. You know, and what I've, uh, I, you know, one of the interesting things, our spiritual counselor for this program, he's an evangelist. His name is Don McIntosh. I understand he's coming to England here pretty soon. Uh, but he's able to work with these people from all different walks of life, the Buddhists, et cetera. He's very successful. But he says there's no pure evangelism than when he does a depression recovery program. He says this is, this is evangelism at its raw roots because it's taking people uh, from whatever walk of life that they're in and whatever spiritual condition. And he says basically what you're doing, Dr. Nedley, is mandating a healthy Seventh-day Adventist lifestyle for 10 days. And then we see the dramatic improvement, 98% uh, a significant improvement rate. Uh, in those that go um, through that program. And, uh, and a, a majority of them leave their depression and anxiety free with their emotional intelligence in the top 20 percentile of the nation. So not only are they no longer encumbered by depression and anxiety, but they're now actually in better mental shape than people who have never suffered from mental illness their entire life out in the community. Uh, and uh, it's just uh, amazing what happens when we uh, utilize the tools of science with the tools of inspiration. And so Christ's wish for all of us, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And the, the uh, amplified version says, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Let's not forsake our own mercy. Let's take hold of the Lord's plan for our life. And it is a plan that will produce a far more abundant, happy, and fulfilled, and successful existence. Shall we bow our heads? Father in heaven, we thank you for the interest that you have in our health of body, mind, and soul. We thank you that by putting all on the altar of sacrifice laid, you will substitute our own personal desires for actually something far better. And we thank you that we can have the trust and confidence in what you have instructed us as, as far as what is best for us individually. And may we not only experience a more abundant life in the future, but may we, through your power, be able to tactfully share this information where the world is so desperately in need of it. We thank you for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.